real quick, I want to show you <clears throat> some of the differences between finding a really uh, good primary source versus finding a normal, just secondary or tertiary, meaning third um, source. So a lot of times when you do a Google search for something, you're going to find articles. All right. So if we put in light pollution here and I search, you can see you get a nice little definition of what it is. Common questions. These are great. But then you get a lot of articles, including the Wikipedia page. All right. That's information. Um, this National Geographic one, you can see I've looked at it before. It's a nice article and it tells a lot of things. But the people that write these articles are not doing the scientific research. And as we've talked about, science takes a certain amount of rigor and uh, the scientific method has to be applied to studies in a very particular way to make sure they're valid. Um, so you don't know exactly where they got all these sources, uh, but there's an easier way to start out this search, to find something that's a little more vetted and things that come from actual scientific studies. So I'm going to copy this same search into another tab. You see my million tabs that you're used to. And I'm going to change this from a Google search to a, I'm going to type dollar. And you can see it pre-populates there for me, .google.com. Now, if you do a Google Scholar search, this is going to cut out any articles or secondary sources, and it's going to bring you the primary sources around light pollution which is the topic I've decided to look. So now if you look right away, I've got this Harvard study that was done. Um, you can see something um, extremely applicable. Let me show you one of my tricks I like to do. This is one of the reasons I have bajillion tabs open at all times, because when you do a Google search, you can't just take the first one. Um, you've got to find the right one for what you're doing. So if you two finger tap on the title, open in a new tab, do that for the first three or four. Get them up there in your tabs and then go back and look through them. You can see the title of that second one right there, light pollution as a biodiversity threat. That sounds like it fits really nicely into what we're doing and then uh, missing the dark. So I would open like four of these. And that also gives me time for them to load in the tabs. So I don't have to sit there and wait for a page to load. So I can see I've got one already loaded and I would go to that study and I would be able to start looking about it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is look for the publishing date and the source. So this was 2004, so it's not super up to date. Let me go back to Google Scholar. So notice over here in the left, you can say since 2020, since 2019, and since 2016. So if I, you can also do a custom range. So if I click from 2016, it only brings me the more current um, articles. In scientific research, you want that, obviously, because um, science is changing all the time. In fact, when I start this search, I would probably start with 2020 and find what's the latest. This looks amazing. Light pollution is a driver of insect declines. Um, when I see that title, it surprises me and I want to know more. So I'm going to pop that open and that's going to give me another venue towards what my research might be uh, because you notice that's a very specific study and you can see that it was um, the biological conservation from sciencedirect.com. Um, I can download the PDF. I could print it out if I want to mark up the text, which I highly recommend. And we'll look at more how to read these later. But right now, I want you to know how to find them, how to find good, real, vetted science, because there is a lot of stuff out there that's not real, vetted science. It's more uh, opinion or building on others' ideas. But when you are looking for science to back up your claim, like you're going to do in this art project, you have to find real science that has gone through the rigor of scientific study. Um, you can't just find something that hasn't been proven. Also, you're going to have to know a little bit about the scientific process to know if the study was real, who paid for the study, um, is there confirmation bias, meaning if someone is doing a study to find something out, 
that they want to prove, you have to figure out, are they finding what they want to prove because they want to prove it? Um, an example of that is a few years ago, there was a big study by the Dairy Association that said milk is essential. Milk has all these things. And um, they, they just kept citing all these studies. But if you looked at the studies, you found that they were all paid for by the Dairy Association. So they were definitely looking for something. And there was immediate suspicion of confirmation bias, um, which is trying to prove what you're trying to prove instead of just doing an experiment and get the results and analyze them no matter what they are. All right, so if you use scholar.google.com, I think you'll find more of what you're looking for for real scientific studies. All right, try it out.